faster than an Arduino Mega, more powerful than a 6502, able to move massive data in a single bound. Look up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Captain Pico. Uh, what is that? Welcome to Life with David. I'm David, and today I just received a curious board, the Udo Key. I joined the Kickstarter campaign 18 months ago, and after all kinds of supply chain delays, it finally shipped from Italy. So why don't you join me as I try to figure out whether this is the best thing since sliced bread, or if it makes as much sense as that car Homer Simpson designed years ago. In October 2021, I got an email about a Kickstarter campaign for a microcontroller called the Udo Key that was supposed to bring artificial intelligence to the Internet of Things. For a relatively low cost of entry, I couldn't pass up the opportunity. The board was advertised as a mashup of the RP2040 and an ESP32 integrated with a 9-axis motion tracking device and a digital microphone. However, COVID was not kind to the developers, and after many starts and stops due to chip shortages, Udo was finally able to complete and ship the Udo key a year later than planned. It was very similar to what was originally proposed, except it only had a six-axis motion tracking device. Well, it arrived the other day, so let's unbox it. The key comes with some headers and jumpers, a couple of stickers for the serial number and Wi-Fi info, a quick start guide, and of course, the main board. The narrow part of the board has the same form factor as a Raspberry Pi Pico, and the wider part hosts the ESP32 with its Wi-Fi Bluetooth motion tracking device and digital microphone. It also contains a circuitry for flashing the ESP32 flash memory. Let's take a guided tour. The RP2040 and ESP32 operate independently, each with their own random access and flash memory. The bulk of the GPIO connections are controlled by the RP2040, while the ESP32 controls communications between the outside world and the key. There are several communication channels that can be routed to either the RP2040 or the ESP32, including a USB-C port for programming either microcontroller, an I2C channel for the motion tracking sensor, and the single wire debug port. The ESP32 can communicate with the outside world using I2C, SPI, UART, Wi-Fi, or Bluetooth. The microphone is connected solely to the ESP32. The ESP32 can also reset the RP2040. There are two connections between the I.O. ports of the ESP32 and the RP2040. They can be configured as UART connections to allow serial communications between the two microcontrollers. There is one jumper to control the flashing of the ESP32 flash memory, one jumper to select which microcontroller is connected to the USB, and one jumper to determine which microcontroller is connected to the motion tracking sensor. There are also three switches, one for the ESP32 reset, one for the RP2040 reset, and one for the RP2040 boot select three LEDs, two for the ESP32 and one for the RP2040, provide visual feedback for program execution. Since each microprocessor operates independently, they need to be programmed separately also. That means you need two different programming environments, one for the RP2040 and one for the ESP32. Since the RP2040 side is Pico compatible, I was able to use my existing environment to compile and flash the memory. However, I've never worked with an ESP32, so I needed to install a new and different environment. Let's go through the ESP32 installation process using my Windows computer. First, navigate to the Udo key getting started with the ESP32 web page. I'll put a link in the description below. Scroll down to the Windows section Click on the link to navigate to the Expressif Windows installer, and then launch it. 
After about 15 minutes, the installer will finish and two different command prompt applications will be installed. Open the ESP IDF prompt. Create a project directory at your desired location and navigate into it. Then create the project blinker by typing idf.py create dash project blinker into the ESP IDF prompt. Inside the main folder within the project folder will be a C file named the same as the project folder, in this case blinker. Open blinker.c with your text editor and notice that the file only contains a few lines of code. Get rid of those. Revisit the UDO key ESP32 Getting Started web page and copy the Blinker program text and paste it into the empty blinker.c file. I'll save you some time here. The text of the Blinker program, as of the date of this video, is incorrect. Two statements that start with GPIO underscore pad underscore select underscore GPIO should be preceded by ESP underscore ROM underscore. Make those changes before you compile the program and then save it back to blinker.c. To make it easier, I'll put a link to the corrected program in the description below. You can copy that one instead of the one listed in the UDO key web page. Next, find out what COM port your connection to the key is using. Connect Jumper 2, which is next to the 10 pin connector, and then with Device Manager open, Watch the COM ports as you plug in the USB-C connector. The communications port should open. It was COM12 for my system. Press the reset button and leave the USB-C cable connected in preparation for downloading the compiled program. Now that you know which COM port is being used by the ESP32, return to the ESP IDF command prompt window and navigate to the project folder. Compile, link, and flash the program by typing idf.py-p-com12-build-flash-monitor. The compile process should take about five minutes for the first time. After the program has flashed to the ESP32 flash memory, remove jumper JP2 and press the reset button. If all goes well, the blue and yellow LEDs should begin blinking. The ESP32 is now running. Now let's get the RP2040 up and running. I won't go through the environment installation since it's the same as for the Raspberry Pi Pico. I've done a video on that and I'll put a link to that video in the description. I'll install blink.uf2 from the Pico examples folder that I had already compiled. First make sure jumper2 is disconnected and connect jumper1 which is next to the USB-C connector. Then plug in the USB-C cable. Hold down the reset and boot select buttons on the RP2040 end of the board. Release the reset button, and after that release the boot select button. That should open up the RPI RP2 device and file manager. Drag the Blink UF2 folder into the RPI RP2 device, and after a second or so, the green light in the RP 2040 end of the board should start to blink. Now I've got both microcontrollers blinking their LEDs separately. However, I want to see them blinking in unison. To do that, I'll use one of the two connections between the ESP32 and the RP2040. I'll modify the ESP32 blinker program to cycle IO22 high and then low each time the yellow LED is lit. The ESP32 IO22 is connected to the RP2040's GPIO0. I'll create a simple RP2040 program that continuously pulls GPIO0 and then turns the LED on or off based on the signal level received. I'll put a link to both programs in the description below. I'll compile and flash both programs to their respective microcontrollers, starting with the ESP32 first. And now for the RP2040.
As you can see, the LEDs are now synchronized with the ESP32 as the master and the RP2040 as the slave. The boards seem to work together fine, but now for the burning question, why? The truth is, I really don't know. I guess when the key was developed, it was a different time. In late 2021, the Raspberry Pi Pico did not have a wireless connection. Since that time, the Raspberry Pi Pico W was introduced, which gave the RP2040 Wi-Fi, but Bluetooth is still a work in progress. Many people feel the ESP32 is a superior microcontroller. Why not just use that one? The only thing I can think of is that they wanted more GPIO ports and adding an RP2040 got them an extra 24. Perhaps Seiko, one of the partners in developing the key, has developed AI solutions that work with the ESP32, but they also wanted to include the RP2040. I haven't looked into this a lot. Hopefully, if any of you have any more insight, please share it in the comments. Thanks for joining me today. I unbox, set up, and demonstrate the new Udo Key dual microcontroller board. I'm not sure what I'll use it for. If you have any ideas, let me know. If there's more interest, I'll do another video. Luckily, the assembly program work I'm doing on the RP2040 will fit in nicely. We'll see where it goes, so stay tuned. If you like this video, or you think someone else might, please give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down. The more likes this video has, the more YouTube will recommend it to others. Also, please leave a comment or suggestion for things to do. I hope to do more of these videos, so please subscribe and click on the bell for notifications of new videos. Let's get together next time for another day in Life with David. See you soon!